Okay. Uh, just need to. No, it's fine. This one for the video and the power. Okay, fine. Hey, hello everybody. Um, so I'm gonna talk about uh, Zyre. Uh, so Zyre is a library that was developed by a friend of mine who passed away last year. Uh, we worked together 10 years ago on something called OpenMQ, which was a broker for a company called JP Morgan Chase. And um, so I, I worked with Peter Hingens. Um, last year I had the chance to work with him. Um, he was, I was coming back from Switzerland and uh, he told me, yeah, I need to do cross compilation for Android, can you help? I have no idea what I'm doing, so I said, yeah, gonna help you. And then we started to work together. Uh, that was in December uh, 2015 or 16, 15. And then uh, we did like two or three projects. And the last project is actually what I'm gonna show to you today. Um, basically, I prepared some OpenWT routers that were showing the power of Zyre uh, library. And uh, when he showed that uh, an IoT conference in Munich in April uh, last year, he was uh, coughing a lot and I told him to visit the doctor. And uh, two, two weeks after that, after that last conference, he was diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer. Uh, basically, he already, already had the cancer in 2010, where he kind of rescued out of it. And, um, but that time, six months after the diagnosis, he passed away. Um, so my nickname is Zubab. Uh, I've been around uh, OpenWRT and other, even before, uh, other embedded systems for a long time, since uh, 2000, 2001. And my personal website is zubab.com. If you Google, if you search for OpenWRT, there's a lot of pages about OpenWT usage and, and things like that. So um, a bit of history. My first router was running Linux was quite hard to find. Um, I found uh, something called Linux AP, and it was also done by a company called Instant, instant802.com. Uh, and that was the first very expensive router, like 200 euro, where you had to buy an SRAM card, and you had only one megabyte of flash and four megabytes of RAM. And that was before OpenWRT. That was this box. I still have like a pile of, at home. I still have like six of those. Um, and then I maintained a small Linux distribution called Intersil 3893. Uh, and that was like around 2003. Uh, we were also looking at Samsung chips to be able to boot UC Linux on there. And that was like the pre-WRT uh, 54G era. At some point, there was a news that Linksys was selling uh, WRT54G running Linux. And the moment I saw the news, I ordered one on Amazon. And I remember it was a Friday. I had to go back home uh, at my parents' place. And I didn't have the time to, to tinker with the box. And I, so I gave it to a friend of mine who is a good Linux hacker um, for the weekend because he was staying at university. And on Sunday, he calls me, hey, I found, I found, I got a root shell, I found a, <laughs> an exploit in the web interface. Uh, and that's how the OpenWRT story began. Um, so Peter uh, worked mostly intensively on, on the ZeroMQ library. So ZeroMQ library comes from high frequency trading. Basically, when I was working on Open, OpenMQ with him, uh, we had this system with a broker. Uh, uh, in the middle, and the, the customer, J.P. Morgan Chase, was asking for the highest number of messages per second. Um, and at the time, I didn't know it was called high-frequency high trading. That's two years or three years after 2009 that I realized that OpenMQ was actually used for high-frequency trading in New York between uh, uh, two points. And ZeroMQ came uh, around 2009. They bought the co source code from a Czech uh, or Slovakian company that was focusing on removing this uh, broker and making the, the speed between uh, two points the fastest as possible. Um, so at the time, Peter went to, to, um, to work for Samsung in South Korea. 
and he worked on a on a toolkit that was that is now named uh, uh, Shard Shard SDK. So the Shard SDK is being used to develop applications uh, like you have two tablets and they have to find each other on the same uh, on the same LAN. So it's basically using uh, broadcast discovery and creating a, a common channel that is predefined in advance uh, so that the devices can communicate. So this allows, for example, if like uh, to join, they join the same network and they auto discover themselves uh, via that technique. Um, so Zyre is um, is built on three libraries. It's built on uh, lib, lib ZMQ, libc ZMQ, um, and it's actually it's actually a library. So you can't use it as such. You have to actually program your own uh, C program to use that library, so that you can benefit from Zyre. So as a, let's say as an end user, I wanted to have like a final end user application I could try. And uh, so we made this demo I'm going to show you with uh, multiple uh, OpenWT routers running with. And uh, later on, I, last year, the ZeroMQ hackathon at FOSTEM, we decided to remove the LED support and just basically uh, have a command and control uh, system where you can actually launch, a, let's say, a shell command on 10 different machines at the same time. Um, so we did, we did a demo with uh, those kind of routers. They are uh, Glinet. I re highly recommend those. They are very hacker friendly, and uh, we put them on batteries. And actually, inside here you have three GPIOs, and I sorted uh, bicycle LEDs, which are actually three volt three LEDs, so that you can actually uh, see the signal from far. Um, I got them from a hackerspace in, uh, in Holland called RefSpace. And the hackerspace, they actually store those devices in a vending machine inside the hackerspace. So if you need one, you just go uh, to Den Haag, you go to the hackerspace, and actually, if you put some cash, you can actually get those. Uh, so there is someone in the hackerspace making a stock of those devices. And if you contact him on IRC, you can actually get them uh, quite quickly if you need, uh, if you need them fast. Um, we made a, a second demo application for FOSDEM where we were showing uh, multiple MIDI keyboards. So they were hooked to this device with a USB to MIDI um, converter and uh, basically connected to the MIDI. Here you, you see the, the MIDI port uh, that was connected to the converter and uh, you needed to install some modules for the sound on the on this device on open it was running fine so that when you play a key the keystroke is actually sent through the wi-fi to a pc that's configured with some uh, synthesizer to receive those keys and when you add a second keyboard you could have actually a multiplayer setup uh, where people could play piano at the same time on the same uh, synthesizer so we tested that with three different uh, keyboards like joining or leaving the network uh, and we had a Murphy showing up at FOSTEM because they blocked the broadcast. So at some point I had to install my own Wi-Fi and then it, it worked fine. Um, yeah, here's the setup. Um, so I can quickly show you the video that uh, we made about the, about the setup. So these are Glee AR150 routers, OpenWRT. They have an antenna. They have LED status lights. Two network ports, power. And we've hacked a bicycle, lamp, and a battery onto the Glee. And we've programmed it. So from a laptop, we can tell it to do things like flash and then try that again. We can say flash, flash. So these Glees are all on the network. They're all connected using Zyre, which is over ZeroMQ, and they can talk to a laptop. But what they also have is a button that when we press, the Glees talk to each other. 
like this. This is now sending out an SOS emergency signal. If I switch it off, it stops right away. So this shows the latency of the network, which is very good. It's a small Wi-Fi that we're using, a little Wi-Fi. Switch it off. There we go. Uh, and I have a second one, which is mostly similar, but a bit different. Okay, I'm going to explain a little bit more about how this cluster works. This is a TP-Link wireless router. It's been set up, runs on a battery. These uh, LiPo batteries will last for about 12 hours. They are quite nice. The only thing that we don't really like is this cable at the back, but that's still a work in progress. Now, here I have one of these little guys unplugged. So I'm going to plug them in, switch them on, and you will see roughly how long it takes for the network to come up. If you see there, a little LED light is switched on. Let me plug in these in the same way. Okay, so we have three. This is the third one here. And now the fourth one. And what we've done with these is that as they start booting, the LEDs will, will indicate, but we'll actually have the light showing. They'll flash once every second as they boot up, and they flash twice when they're ready. So that flashed. That one's going to flash soon. And the other two will flash. Oh, there we are. So that's ready. And when they're ready, you'll see on top that there's a, a little rotating sequence on the LEDs. That's actually the GLARD. 150 daemon doing the work. And that daemon is a Zyre application which connects to the Wi-Fi network, finds other nodes, joins the cluster, and it starts actors which manage the lamp, which detect the switch, and which manage the LEDs. And now basically it's ready, and if I go into emergency mode on any of these guys, then they all start blinking. Happy little bunnies. Beep, beep, beep. Very robust. So you see that latency is really good. It interrupts this, switches off right away. And they all work the same way. So this could be anything. This is now just a demo of a Morse code signaling. It could be an alarm system. It could be temperature sensors. It could be control of uh, devices in a factory. Um, so far, we've been testing this for about three or four days, and we've had no no Wi-Fi failures, and no issues with stability. This little Wi-Fi network is surprisingly powerful. So there you are. All the source code is on GitHub. Follow the link below, and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Um, so uh, the next part of my talk, so we took this code, which was actually uh, playing with the GPIOs on this device, and we removed that code to simplify it, to have a simple, let's say, SSH of the pool without encryption, uh, where you could actually, uh, on, one, on your laptop, you can actually decide that you are the master of the cluster, and then you can send some commands to the slaves. So I've made, um, I didn't have the time to recompile. It's like a year and a half that I haven't touched the OpenWT packages. So I rebuilt yesterday uh, stuff on Debian. And I made the Docker image um, where I spawn like three of them. And I can quickly show you the, uh, the result. Um, so here I'm going to launch three of those. If it wants. Uh, so by default, it gives an IP address in 172 on ETH0. And I have this GLAR daemon where I have to specify the interface um, like this. And basically, it's, it's like creating, uh, it's creating a net, kind of a network with a predefined channel and gives an, uh, uh, a name. So if I launch a second one, uh, paste and do the same if they are on the same, on the same network. 
it wants to. Uh, Lord minus e eth zero. Um, I'm gonna launch another one eth zero, and then this one I'm gonna decide that's the control, uh, the controller. Uh, here uh, the application is compiled to just listen for commands on the on the input of the controller and sends them to to the slave. So if I do a pwd, uh, it says I have uh, here four. Maybe I have more in the background, but I have uh, five slaves listening to me. And basically, it, it launched the PWD command on all the five. So, for example, if I type hostname, then it should execute hostname on all the five machines at the same time. Uh, the thing for ping localhost. Then I have the output. Um, and so there is, uh, for example, if I quit here, uh, there I counted, I counted five, five, now I have four. So it's like dynamic join and leave the network uh, on the fly. Um, so there's actually discussion on the ZeroMQ mailing list about adding the encryption to that. So it could be used as a remote control system for uh, a fleet of routers. Uh, the encryption, someone gave the code, but I didn't have time to, to play around with it. Uh, so if tomorrow there are people interested, we, can, we could try to figure out how, how this works. Um, so for me, that's mostly it. I don't know in time if I have more questions, if people want to ask questions. If we have one minute or... So thanks very much for your attention. Uh, Oops.